Ladies and gentlemen, little dynamite review. Right here in the group, folks, wrestling ranters there. Retired from YouTube, folks. I mean, it's time to concentrate on other stuff in life there. Eating pork chops, spaghetti, stuff like this there. And have some fun in the group and other stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck YouTube there. But little review of Dynamite there, so I can do a lazy version of my A material in the group again, folks. It's time for me to build a retirement home here in this group. I closed about 300 groups, so we're, we don't have as many people joining, folks, but we do what we can there as long as we can have fun. I mean, that's what matters, folks. Okay, so we had CM Punk on commentary. Um, like, we talked about the Jordans because the guy from NXT mentioned the Jordans. Punk had to talk about the stuff there. Um, there's a lot of uh, constant, you know, trying to deflect any type of criticism. They do this on the show. Being the elite, they constantly, like, you know, always address all the criticism. Like, they can just let some of this stuff go, you know what I mean? Um, but CM Punk was on commentary. Sometimes he tries too hard to sound smart for his own good, you know what I mean? First match, Malachi Black defeated Dante Martin. It was okay, I guess. It's Malachi Black. It looks like he's wrestling a 14-year-old kid or whatever. Um, I think the people on commentary themselves were complaining that the kid's leg was hurt but he kept jumping around and doing flips you can tell that Jim Ross and these guys wanted the kid to sell the leg injury and in the match you know but he's still jumping around anyway Malachi Black has him in a single leg Boston Crab and then he starts clutching at his ribs for whatever fucking reason. And he lets go of the hold or whatever. And he just out of nowhere starts clutching his ribs. And the commentary tried to make sense of this. Little kick from behind Excalibur. Oh, I don't know. I, uh... And he's clutching the ribs. I don't know what was happening. Like... Punk said maybe like he swallowed the black mist thing. I don't know if this was a part of a gimmick or what, but I don't know where he's clutching his ribs. It didn't make sense. He gives him the kick one, two, three. So I don't know what the fuck was going on with Malachi Black with his ribs. Is this a gimmick in the future? He's going to start clutching his ribs. Then he, he pukes like uh, the guy in WWE. He's going to puke. I don't know if, if this is something there. He's got some evil inside. So he's clutching his ribs or I don't know. What the fuck this was, but it made no sense. The Elite attack Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus backstage. They rip off the shield. They do like a shield power bomb through a table. At least they didn't botch it this time or whatever there. Um. Jericho and the Inner Circle had a promo with... Dan Lambert and the American Top Team. It was okay, I guess, the promo. 
Lambert was talking about Sammy Guevara. He says there's only one guy in the group who has a title, and it's Tiny Tim. He calls him Tiny Tim. <laughs> And AEW fans, they don't want this guy around. He's the best talker there, you know, because he bashes the promotion. Oh, you, you should leave. Get a fucking life. Immature fucking losers. Like, the Dan Lambert guy is the best talker they have in this company. Like, way better than CM Punk. Um, second match, and this was fucking weird here. It's Lucha Brothers defending the AAA Tag Team Championships against friends of Andrade, against some of Andrade's friends. And then La Superanas come out, a couple of guys with green suits. Apparently this means Super Frogs. And uh, CM Punk, hey, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is FTR. It's FTR in those outfits. So they take the masks off first. One of the FTRs was trying to take off the mask of the other guy and then Excalibur says that would be a DQ in Mexico. This is for the Mexican tag team titles, so it's under Triple A rule. That could be a disqualification. But then Lucha Brothers start taking off the mask of FTR. Oh, we're told this is under AEW rules. Uh, there's no DQ if you take off the mask. So amateurish, you know what I mean? But then they take off the mask of FTR, you know what I mean? And then it shows that it's FTR. But Punk already spoiled that, uh, like on commentary. Was he supposed to spoil it? Is it a thing that they come out with this outfit? It's supposed to be obvious it's them, so Punk just says it's them not to mess with intelligence of the Smarks or whatever. But by doing this, it kills the potential surprise that it's them. Here's my main question. Why the fuck did FTR come out like this? They're on the roster. Why wasn't this just advertised as FTR versus Lucha Brothers for the Triple A championships? Why? Why didn't they just advertise a big tag team match? FTR versus Lucha. Oh, it's friends. It was advertised as mystery opponents, friends of Andrade. So you're expecting, like, non-AEW wrestlers, like, to show up some kind of special, a surprise of some sort? And why would it be FTR under these outfits? This is retarded, like, they're not even friends with Andrade in the storyline, like, maybe they're friends backstage, but I don't... I don't know of any association of FTR and Andrade. Why bring them in as Andrade's friends, mystery opponents? And it's FTR under retarded outfits. They're not even friends of Andrade. You should have just advertised FTR against Lucha. And then Punk spoils the surprise that it's the FTR. Then they take off the mask like two minutes into this match. And then it's FTR wrestling with retarded outfits for the whole match. And it was a serious match. And they're dressed like this. What the fuck was this?
and on commentary. <laughs> oh, I don't know how this happened or why it's like this, but I'm enjoying this match. That's how bad it was. Like, And then FTR wins like this. And then after the match, it's... It's MJF talking with Andrade. Oh, you can have FTR for just one night. And then Andrade gives F uh, MJF money. But like, what the fuck is this? makes no sense. If this match took place in AAA, let's say. It was in AAA. And Andrade has a feud with the Lucha Brothers. Maybe this is what's going on in AAA. And then he brings in this mystery tag team and they're revealed as FTR. A couple of his co co-workers from AEW. This would make sense if it's happening in Mexico. His FTR don't work there. If he brings them in, it would make sense there that it's some of his AEW co-workers coming in. <clears throat> but in what fucking world does it make sense for FTR who are aligned with MJF that have nothing to do with Andrade? How are they brought in as Andrade's friends? They're dressed up like frogs, for fuck's sake. And then they ruin the, the surprise that it's them, and then, like, what is this? Like, was this taped for AAA Mexico? Like, this should have never happened on AEW TV. Like, this should have happened in Mexico. Like, this is retarded, for real. There's no way to make sense of this. This is bad. Third match. John Moxley squashed Wheeler Utah, the friend of Orange Cassidy. Uh, Moxley just came in and squashed him there, so... Some people were complaining about this. Why is Moxley fighting jobbers? He's been fighting jobbers for two months. I've been asking this for two months. Lucha Brothers and Adam Cole defeated the Dark Order. This was an okay match, I guess. And then Jungle Boy came out because they attacked him earlier. He came out with a chair and he was pissed off and... Like four guys plus Don Callis run away from little Jungle Boy with his chair. Jungle Boy was trying to act like an angry, tough guy wrestler, but it uh, wasn't really convincing <laughs> to me there. But Then you had some weird ass fucking Cody Rhodes cinematic shit. He's at his training facility with Arn Anderson. He walks there. It's all cinematic, you know. It's Red Velvet, Lee Johnson, and other jobbers. You've gone Hollywood, Cody! Lee uh, Velvet, whatever, says, and then she slaps Cody in the face, and then... It's Cody training, and these wrestlers are coming at him, and it's like cinematic. It, they're acting like if wrestling is real, and he's training kind of deal. It was very weird, and he was training for Malachi Black. And this was pretty much designed to try to get the fans to cheer for Cody. Like, oh, you remember... When your dad put stitches in my head, did people cheer for me? Did they feel bad for me and, uh, and boo your father? No, because I deserved it back then. And Malachi Black deserves it. So this is to try to, I guess, stop the fans from booing Cody. But this was just fucking weird. Like, this was another weird thing here and there, like. <clears throat> then you had MJF cutting a promo 
Uh, I have a match with Darby Allen tonight, but Darby was injured or whatever, so he wasn't there. MJF's talking shit. He gets a referee to come out to count to ten, but then Sting comes in with the baseball bat. MJF sacrifices Wardlow or whatever, and he runs away, which was a bit funny. Then he goes to come back to fight Sting, and then he leaves again. M MJF was funny here, there. Fifth match, Penelope Ford defeated Kiera Hogan from TNA in a shit match. Then Ruby Soho came out to get her revenge from last night, boy. Um, like, how long are people going to pretend that uh, Ruby Soho is a big deal? Can can they just stop this, please, there? With her shitty fucking punk wannabe song. Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho. Like, and they, they're trying to get the fans to sing this thing. Fucking cringe fast enough. Move on, please. Then we had a promo from Adam Page, the number one contender. Boy. Um, the promo was... It wasn't a bad promo there, cowboy shit this, cowboy that, I was beat, I found myself again, uh, I'm gonna win the title, I believe in myself. I don't know if I believe in him as a believable world champ, that's the problem, you know what I mean, he believes in himself. He's friends with Kenny Omega, but the American audience didn't see him in Japan, you know. He's a young guy starting out. There's no reason to really believe that he's world champ material, you know. It hasn't been proven yet. Like, the way he's been booked, just, you know... We'll see what happens, folks. I mean, and then it was Daniel Bryan or the American Dragon, Bryan Danielson. I think he should just drop this Brian, this American Dragon name. He's not, you know, Japanese. He's not a, a mixed martial artist or, a, or a, a kung fu fighter. The American Dragon, like. Why, like, if he was in Japan there, if he was in a ninja movie and he's the great white ninja or whatever, hey, I'm the American dragon here in the foreign uh, land in Japan there. Okay, but, like, you're in America, you're not a ka karate guy. Why call yourself American dragon? Like, you know what I mean? And this was like a serious match there. Bobby Fish and, and Brian in a competitive MMA match. I mean, this was serious. I, I, I spent most of the time eating my hamburger helper, folks. There I was eating my lasagna hamburger helper, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't paying as much attention to Bobby Fish as I should have been, folks. But um, Brian, he won with this leg maneuver or whatever, just a basic leg submission, you know. And that's the thing, apparently, Daniel Bryan on the indie circuit, he would end wrestling matches with different moves. He might end with an arm bar, some kind of pin, a small package, and I get the idea that if wrestling was real, you wouldn't always end with a finishing move. You might end the match with a submission. Like, I get it, what the thought process is in this. But a boring, stiff match with a boring, stiff, like Bobby Fish, 
It looks like two midgets pretending to be fighters there. Um, you know, the American midget, they call himself this, but I like Brian there, but two midget pro pretending to be tough guy. The match ends with a fucking cheap fucking leg submission, not even a cool looking submission move. I don't find that entertaining personally, you know what I mean? I understand indie fans, it's a weird, different mentality there. But if you want to actually attract real wrestling fans who aren't weird and psycho there, <laughs> you know, you have to do more entertaining stuff. I thought the show, a lot of it is bad on paper. A lot of it sounds terrible, and a lot of it was. Like, I thought some of it was okay when I was watching it. It wasn't good, like... Oh, fuck, I don't know, man. I don't know if... I enjoyed some of it, but it's bad writing. This stuff with FTR dressed up like frog. What the fuck is that? Like, what is this? You know, the, the, and the main event, that's not main event material, Bobby Fish, and it ends in a cheap cornball submission. Like, I don't know. This show has potential to be better if you had regular stuff, but there's too much indie junk. Get rid of the indie junk. Have a regular show. For the love of fucking shit, like, whoo, it's hard watching this program today. It felt tough, folks. Well, here you go there. You got a bit of A material in the group there. Um, I'm probably going to get a bit more lazy there, but I'm going to be doing some shit in this group. Live shows, videos. I'm going to have a good time here, there. I'm done with with YouTube stuff, I'm just gonna do, like, real life, post some stuff on my regular Facebook timeline, maybe food reviews, stuff like this, for fun, you know, not make it wrestling Jesus on my regular timeline there, you know what I mean? I want to be a human being, folks, not just a guy that talks about wrestling there on my Facebook profile, you know. But here in the group, I'm going to keep the, the wrestling Jesus spirit alive or whatever there, give y'all some material, but I'm done with the YouTube, folks. It's time to grow old and... Uh, Get ready to die at some point, folks. But I need to enjoy life and not just fixate on fucking YouTube. It's time for fun, ladies and gentlemen. Have some fucking fun. Have some fun. Until next time, peace.